laziness, right? We don't want to do something twice. Why not? Well, because, you know, we don't like to work that hard and, and do the same thing twice. We just want to do it once and be done with it. But that's good and that's beneficial from a software development perspective because if we put something once, then we can make a change to it only in one place and therefore any change that comes down, down the pike is going to be easier to implement. And if you think about it, so many things we do in software development, whether you're talking about web or traditional software development, is based on that sort of mentality. In web development, we have external style sheet files. Why do we do that? So, well, if we want to change the general appearance of a page, we can just do that right in, in the, the external CSS file and all the pages get it. We do that in conventional software development where we, where, where we develop classes, right? We develop classes that will, you know, um, implement certain functionality about our customers, for example. And then any time we need to use a customer or do something with it, we use that same customer class. And the advantage is if something about how we handle our customers changes, like like, you know, discounts that we offer them or, or penalties that, that we charge them based on being late. All we have to do is put that in the one customer place. So, again, that's another example from software development that you might be familiar of, of putting code in one place so that you only have to change it once. All right? It requires a little bit of extra planning up front. But the benefits are is that extra planning will help you down the line as you go in and need to change it because then you only need to change it in one place. So, last time we talked about redirecting the user to one of two pages depending on whether they're on a mobile device or not. And so the implication is, is there's two different sites. There's a desktop site or a full version of the site and there's a mobile version of the site. And we have sort of a script as a gatekeeper, a traffic cop that directs the person one place or the other. Now the problem that we run into is that some of the content is bound to be duplicated between the two pages. All right. Typically, why do we have separate sites? Well, we have separate sites because maybe we want to show people less stuff on the mobile site. Um, maybe less stuff on each individual page. Maybe less pages. You know, in general, we want to keep it simpler on the mobile device than we do on a desktop uh, site. So maybe the navigation's simpler. That is, we have less links. So there's less content that way. Maybe we have, uh, again, um, less uh, content on every single page. So the question is, though, that there's still going to be some stuff that's going to be repeated. We might have a banner, for example that goes on the top of both pages, both the desktop and the full version. We might have a certain portion of the navigation which is common, both in the main page, you know, the, the, the full site and on the mobile site. So we don't want to have to duplicate that effort. So what can we do to keep from duplicating that effort? And that's where PHP include files come in. All right? A PHP include file is a file similar to an external CSS file, but we can put any kind of code in it. In, in an external CSS file, the only thing you put in there is CSS code. In a PHP include file, you can put anything that can be in a PHP file. That is, you can put PHP script, you can put plain old HTML, you can put JavaScript, you can put um, CSS code, you can really put anything. Typically what you put in there is some mix of PHP and HTML code. Remember, after all, what is a PHP page? A PHP page is simply an HTML page that has some PHP code in it. All right? So it's a mix. Every PHP code, for the most part, is going to be a mix of some pieces of HTML and some pieces of PHP. Well, if we think about it, the things that I talked about that are going to be likely to be common between the mobile and the full site are things like the banner, maybe the contact information on the bottom of the page, maybe part of the navigation is going to be common, and so on. That is going to be, in other words, it's going to be some probably HTML code. So while we can put CSS code in include file, 
or I'm sorry, in a, an external CSS file, and JavaScript we can put in an external JavaScript file. HTML and other PHP code we can put into include files. So let me show you what I mean. This, by the way, is, is useful even regardless of um, if you're working in a mobile environment or not. For example, those of you that um, took my CSS 216 class, the Intro to Web Development, we, we created things called wireframes or templates for our page. And a very common kind of template looks like this, where we have on our web page, a banner over there, a navigation, a content area, and maybe a footer on the bottom of the page. You know, that's sort of a template. Maybe all our pages in our website are going to look like that. And that's called a, a wireframe because we're just really dividing up the main sections of, of the page. And that banner is going to maybe contains our company's logo and then maybe you know, maybe a logo image along with some text over here. And this might be a list of links that, again, are going to be common on each page. And this content information might be common on each page. And really the only thing that's going to vary from page to page is going to be this, the content area. So what we did in the CISS 216 class is we created our template to contain the HTML code for the banner, the HTML code for the navigation, the HTML code for the footer. All right? And then we cloned it for every page that we had. So, for example, if I had four pages, I would make the template. Then I'd make four copies of that page. The home page, the second page, the third page, and the fourth page. Now, and that was good because then all we would have to do is go in and change the content for each page. You know, make the main content area for the home page. Make the first or the second page, third page, fourth page. And we would only have to worry about this section of the page because the rest of the page is going to stay constant. All right. Now, here's a problem with that though. What if we didn't get the banner exactly right? What if we've cloned our page and our company comes out with a new logo? or the company wants the title to be rephrased slightly, wants to put some different text up there, or whatever. At this point, we have four copies of that page, and would have to go in and make that change four times. So the strategy that we took in CISS 216 was good with the technology that we knew at the time, because when we were creating a page, we didn't have to create the common sections of the page four times. We created it once, copied it, and then went in and customized each page to have its custom content. The problem is if you need to go back and change that page, you'd have to go and change the banner, the navigation, and the footer on each page. This is where PHP include files help. So PHP include files are where you have any section of code that you want to share between pages. And again, it could be just within all the pages on a full website. Or it could be pages within, between the full version of the site and the mobile version of the site. So let's look at how a PHP include file works. And let's look at the example that we had last time. If I'm not mistaken, it was in C, XAMP, htdocs. And it was called Lecture. All right. Let me make sure that our server is running. So let's go in and... Start up our control panel. And... Start everything. All right. Now we can go and access this. Again, it is in our htdocs folder, which is our web server's root folder, our local web server's root folder. 
and it's in a lecture folder and it's called index.php, the page that we're looking at. So I can go in here and I can type in localhost slash lecture slash index.php and there we go. There's the full site. All right. Now if we view the same page within our mobile emulator and we'll emulate a smaller device. We get the mobile version of the site. Okay. Notice in both cases, I you know nothing up my sleeve, as they say. In no, in both cases, we access the same URL. But in the case of the full version, in the case of a desktop, it gave us the full version of the page. It has more decoration on it and other stuff. We could imagine other stuff that would be on there. On the mobile version, the mobile version in general is simpler. All right, so we get sent to that page. Now, let's say I want to put a banner on both of these pages. All right, a banner both on the mobile version and on the um, mobile version and on the full version. So if I open this up in Notepad, All right. I could go in here and I could put I'm using the older HTML4 divs instead of the HTML5 tags just for Fun. And I could put in here an H1 that says Zellers Incorporated Software consulting since 1976. All right. So now we go and we view the, the page. All right. Let's go and move that into the container so we get that style behind it. And there we go. All right, that's in there. All right. So I go and I, uh, you know, already now I, you know, I have to make the same change in two places. I decide I want a banner in there, so I'm going to have to go and copy this banner. Assuming I want the same banner, I'm going to go and copy that into the mobile version of the page. So I'll go in and I'll copy it into the mobile version of the page. And there I have it in the mobile page. Now, of course, anything I want to make a change to regarding that banner, I have to do in two places. All right. Assuming I want the same banner on both, which that's the assumption we're working on. So if I wanted to change this to say excelling in software consulting since 1976, I have to go into the mobile version. And I have to go into the desktop version. And 
There we go. And there we go. Not sure if that's how you spell excelling, because it sure doesn't look right. Is there a second L? All right. Ah. Maybe I made that spelling error on purpose to show you that if I made a mistake and there was a bug in here, I'd have to go in and, and do it in two places. Or maybe not. Maybe I, I just went blank on how to spell excelling. So you get the idea. Now the banner is something simple, you might say. And you might say, well, that's not that big a deal. How, I mean, how often does an organization change their banner? But keep in mind that this would apply to any piece of common code that was shared between the desktop and the mobile. And there might be a lot of common code that's shared between the desktop and the mobile. Especially if you consider that the mobile site is sort of like going to be a subset of the main site. All right? And therefore, there's going to be a lot of chunks like this chunk, all right, that we want to go and we want to have the ability to only change it in one place and get the change reflected across, um, across everything. This, this would also apply, by the way, if I had more than one desktop page and more than one mobile page. All right, here my, my website, my mobile site and full site just consists of exactly one page. Well, that's not really much of a site, right? But if I had more than one page for the mobile site or more than one page for the full site, the same deal. I change it on one, change the banner in one place, I want it to be changed across everything. So that's where an include file comes in. So what I can do is I can do this. I can take out the code that's common. In this case, the banner is what's common. I'm going to take it out in here. Take it out of there. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new file that contains only that common code. And I'm going to save it. And in this case, I'm going to save it in the same place as my web pages. So I'm going to go into the htdocs lecture folder and I'm going to save it with an INC extension. I don't actually have to save it with an INC extension. I could save it with a PN, PHP extension and so on. But typically what I, my practice is to save it with a .inc. That lets me know that that's not a full web page. That that's, that's a piece of a web page. So I'll call it banner .inc, and I'll save it there. Okay. So now I have that include file that I can bring into both places. How do you bring in an include file? Well, it happens in PHP, so I have to get out of HTML mode and into PHP mode. What is our signal to tell the web server that were in PHP, not HTML, it's those declarations. The lesson sign question mark PHP, and then the lesson sign, I'm sorry, the, the question mark followed by the greater than sign. So the web server knows that everything in here is not plain old HTML. It's some kind of PHP. It's some sort of PHP instruction. Now, the exact nature of the PHP instruction could, could vary wildly depending on the project. I mean, it could be accessing the database to pull up a list of products that are on sale, or it could be doing any number of different things. But the server knows that the stuff between those quote or uh, between those uh, declarations isn't plain old HTML, that the server needs to do some processing on it to get it ready to be sent to the browser. Now, in the case of an include file, that, that processing is pretty simple. All right? Essentially what it does, essentially what the web server does when it sees an include file is it grabs the contents of the include file and it more or less pastes it smack dab wherever the include file is. So, I'm going to say include, then in parentheses I'll put Actually, I don't think you need parentheses. Include banner.inc. Then I end the statement with a semicolon. 
so effectively. What that's telling the web server to do is go out, find the contents of banner.inc, whatever those contents happen to be, and pop them right here, paste them right here before you send this to the client. Has anyone done COBOL programming? All right. What were copy files? That's exactly what this is. This is like a copy file. All right. In other words, this, this lives wherever it lives. And in my case, I put it in the same folder, but we could certainly put it in another folder. And when the web server processes this, that code is brought in at that point into this PHP page. So now let's go and look at it. Now if we go and look at this, all right, that works. Let's go and change the mobile one to use the include file as well. All right. And that works as well. Now, let's say if I let's say if I think about this for a second, say, you know what, I really wasn't excelling in 1976. It took me till about 1978 before I was excelling in this. All right. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that to say excelling in software consulting since 1978. So now because that's in an include file, all I have to do is go in, change it in the one place, save it, and both the desktop and the mobile get adjusted. All right? So, this mitigates the problem that we have with having two different websites, right? Because the whole problem of having a desktop version or a full version and a mobile version is that we're going to have to duplicate a lot of the code twice. All right? Because we know that even though we have separate websites, there's going to be some stuff in common, right? They're not like going to be two completely different websites, right? There's going to be some stuff in common on both of them. So our problem was then, well, how do we manage that? How do we keep from having to do twice amount of work whenever anything changes? And one of the answers is, at least in this particular platform that we're using, this technology is the PHP include file, where you can take the common code, put it in an include file, and then you can bring those include files in to uh, all the relevant pages. All right, and... Um, And then they're separate so that if you need to change something, you only need to change one. You don't have to change uh, both of them. Questions about this? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to work through an exercise, and, and I'm not sure if we'll get through it all today or if we will work on it next time. But what we're going to do is we're going to say... We're going to, we're going to develop a, a template and a few sample web pages, both for a mobile and for a desktop application or, or a website. All right. I'm going to sketch out wireframes for the mobile and for the desktop, for the full version. Then we'll talk about how we're going to implement those. All right. We'll talk about how we're going to implement those. Keep in mind, I'm going to be describing, you know, one way to do it. You know, um, from time to time I'll get students ask me, you know, is the way that you do it, like, the only right way? And my answer is always like, no, it's not the only right way. All right. But the way I do it typically achieves some goals. And if you develop a solution that also achieves those goals, that's okay. If you develop a solution that doesn't achieve those goals, then I'm going to try to convince you that my way is better. All right? So it's not like there's only one correct way. All right? 
I can look at two ways and say, this is better than that, and I can point to some tangible reasons why. All right? Or I can look at two alternative ways of doing it and say, you know, those two are about as good as each other. And really, to a large degree, what it comes down to is the maintainability of it. All right? Your goal is to create code that if anything changes, the amount of work you have to do to implement that change is minimized. So that's my goal in creating it, and that's why I'm creating it in the way that I'm going to. All right? And again, you may do it a different way. If you achieve that same goal, more power to you. If you don't, then I'm going to have to pull out graphs showing how the expense of software goes up as you make changes to it, and, and you're not going to enjoy it. All right? So um, that's how that works. All right. Let's say we're going to do a full and mobile version for a website about LC's mobile software development curriculum. All right? Subject near and dear to us, right? Because we're here about this. Now, let's say, let me sketch a wireframe on what this is going to look like. All right? Let's say we want our full version to look like this. Have a banner going across the top. have a navigation down the side, have a main content area, have a sidebar, and then finally have footer information including the content. All right, so that's the wireframe that our um, page is going to follow. How is our mobile page going to look? Our mobile page, I want to look like this. I want to have the banner on the top. the navigation over here, but I'm only going to have four links on the mobile where I want to have seven links in the full site. We're assuming on the mobile I just want a home page and then I want a page about the three different classes the intro to Android development, the advanced Android, actually we'll do five and eight. I forgot we do that. We do development in, what's that other, the Mango platform? No. The Cantaloupe? No. Oh, the Apple platform. Right, right. We do it in, we do in the other platform too. So. On the, on the mobile navigation, we're going to have five pages. We're going to have a home page, the intro to Android, advanced Android, iOS, and mobile web. We're going to have those same navigation links here, but we're going to have a few extra navigation links. You know, maybe about getting financial aid or whatever. All right. The point is, is we're going to have more content as far as navigation goes on the main version of the site than we will on the uh, mo uh, mobile version. We're then going to have the content and a footer. All right. So that's the approach that we're going to take. All right. Now, for any of the pages that they have in common, the content here is going to match the content there. So in other words, there's going to be a home page for both. All right? The content on the full home page is going to look the same as the content on the mobile home page. The difference is, is there won't be that sidebar. 
So on the full version of the site, in addition to this content area, there'll be a little sidebar here. All right. Um, the banner and the footer are going to look the same across all of the pages. All right. And the navigation is going to look the same on all the pages, with the exception that there'll be some additional links on the um, full version that are not on the mobile version. Okay, so let's think about how we could do this. All right. If we were doing this for real, if this is a real project that we were working on, we would have to assess and say what's the best strategy to take. Because we could actually do this a couple different ways. right? We could actually use the notion of progressive enhancement and we could probably get, or get by with just one set of pages by cleverly applying CSS. All right? By media queries and so on. We probably could do some things like create the HTML to contain these five sections and hide this section if they're on a mobile device. All right? And hide the extra links if they're on a mobile device and so on. So we probably could do it with one, but we're going to pretend we don't want to do that. We're going to pretend th this is too much of a difference to do in one page. So you know, maybe we can assume there's other changes as well that's going to be, or, or other additional content. All right? that, that we're, we're not actually going to implement. But again, if we decide that there's too drastic of a difference between the two versions of the page, then we probably want to go for two separate pages, a mobile version or a uh, full version. All right? Here's how this is going to work. All right? As far as the directory structure of everything. And I'm going to do this incrementally. I'm going to do this one little baby step at a time. All right? Um, because this is how I code. All right? I mean, it, it's, you know, it's nice and I think it's good for students to see the process and to see it step by step, but I'm not acting any different than if I had to do this for real. Right? Um, I see students a lot of times try to do a lot of stuff in one shot, you know, you run into problems doing that. It's better to do a little piece of it, get it working, then go on to the next piece. So we've learned ways that we can sort of mitigate the duplicate work, but the thing to keep in mind is it requires planning to do it. So this is what we're planning now. All right? This is what we're planning now. So here's what we're going to have. I'm going to have my website's root directory, all right, which is physically the htdocs folder. That is going to contain one file, a PHP, an index PHP. The way web servers are set up, they're set up looking, and they look for some default pages. So if I just type in google.com, what page do I get? Well, I get the page that was defined on their web server as a default page. Well, typically on a PHP machine, the default page is, is often named index.php. So this is going to be in my root folder, and it's going to be the code that executes when I go to localhost. All right, if I just type in localhost, it's going to pull up this index page. Okay? Now, I'm going to have then two folders, and I'm going to draw them on both sides here, full and mobile. And this is where the two copies of the pages are going to live. So in other words, there's going to be a home page for full, there's going to be a home page for mobile. There's going to be a CISS 265 page for the full. There's going to be a CISS 265 PHP page for mobile. Likewise, CISS 266 PHP, and so on down the line. 
Now there might be some pages here that aren't in here. Like, you know, Android resources, financial aid resources, and so on. Because remember, the whole point of this is that there's more stuff in the, in the full version than there is in the mobile version. So we're going to have these things. Each of these folders contain their separate versions of the page. All right? Uh, of, the, of the pages. But, again, remember, we don't want to duplicate stuff. So what are we going to do? We're going to have an include file folder on the same level that's going to include all the stuff that gets shared between these. So the banner, maybe a style sheet or two. We might also have an images folder if we're going to have any images. And in that way, both the stuff in the full directory and the stuff in the mobile directory is going to refer to the stuff in the include file and in the images. So we're not going to have any duplication between the two. All right. So every one of these pages is going to point to the banner include file. Now it might look different on a mobile device than it will because I'm going to apply different style sheets. But again, that's sort of the idea of, of how it's going to work. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, we're going to start out um, and again, we're just going to build this very slowly. All right, we're going to start out building the home page. Uh, so the home page will sort of work as our template, as well as a sample page, and then we'll go and we'll clone them later. I'm going to go and into my htdocs folder here, and I'm just going to get rid of everything. Or maybe a better way to put it is I'm going to put it somewhere else. Because I want my I hope this still works. I want to cut everything out of there. And I'll create a backup folder and put it on the desktop. All right, there we go. All right. Now the question is, if you're watching this, you might be thinking, what's the purpose of this index file? Why do we have three index files? I know we need a home page for the mobile, we need a home page for the full. What's that third index file do? Redirect. Yeah, the third index file is just a traffic cop. Someone comes to the URL, they get sent one place or the other. From there, it works as though they're two totally separate websites. All right, so let me go and let me create my folders in here. I'll create a folder for full. I'll create a folder for mobile. And I'll copy the index from our backup into here. Actually, I'll copy it into all three places. Alright, and then I'm going to trim down the full. I am going to
If you ever have this happen, if you notice what happened is that it uh, didn't get the, the line breaks right. Well, oh, shoot. Oh, come on. You can go and open it up in WordPad and then go and save it and that will put the line breaks back in. I copied the wrong file. I wonder. So let's rewind. This is the file I actually want to copy. Let's go in here and open this guy up in Notepad. And this is a full version. So for now, all I'm going to do is get rid of all of this. I'm just going to put the words full on that. All right. Save it. I'll go and I'll put the words mobile in the mobile version. And then, the top level index, the one that is in the web server's root, that's the one that's going to be my traffic cop. And it's not going to have any HTML code of its own. It's simply going to have in it this big old if statement that I borrowed from the techmobilebrowsers.com that grabs the user agent, identifies, and checks to see is this a mobile device that I know about. And if it's a mobile device that I know about, it's going to send it to the mobile page. Well, the mobile page is going to be in the folder called mobile slash index.php. All right. I'm going to put an else on here that says if it's not a mobile, I want to redirect it to the full versions index.php. So, right now all we got is we have our traffic cop that's in the web server's root. So if someone goes in and types in www.mywebsite.com, it goes to the web server's root and looks for one of those default documents. One of the default documents is called index.php. So it will pull up this in, the web server will execute this script, check to see if it's a mobile device. If it is, sends them to the mobile version, otherwise sends them to the desktop version. And I'm keeping things in their own folders just to keep things straight. Just to, so I can treat them as though they're two totally separate websites. Alright. 
So let's go and run this and see what happens. So if I open my browser and type in localhost up here, I got to the full site. Notice it says full site, the title says full site. So, with just, and, and notice the address bar indicates that I got redirected. It indicates I got redirected to the full version. Let's do the same thing with the mobile emulator. Let's open up the mobile emulator and we'll start a mobile. And I go in and pull up localhost. Not easy to see, but you can see that I got redirected and we're in the mobile site. All right. So now I have it. So that if anyone accesses my web server's root, and when do you access the web server's root? If you just type in the URL, you know, the, 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 the domain name, www.lorainccc.edu. When you go to that, you're pulling up the default page in the web server's root folder. So if I type in localhost, all right, because that's what my web server's named, it will go to index.php in that web server's root, and all that does is it sends them one way or another. Now that's horribly tiny. We can't read it at all because I did what I always do, and I forgot to put that little snippet of code in there. And... So I'll go and copy this guy here, setting the viewport. So I will put in the mobile version of this, in the head section, that meta tag, setting the viewport, which gives a more uh, realistic looking size on this guy. So now if I go and refresh, there I get mobile site. You can see it. All right. So, may not look like I have much, but I do have some cool stuff. I have, I have a mechanism to send them to two pages and I have two totally standalone sites and then I have a folder or I soon will have a folder for my common include files. So, let's go up here and make the folder for the include file and I'll call it INC. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a banner. All right. Now, in doing this, I'm applying the strategy that was suggested um, when they talked about the progressive enhancement. When they talk about the progressive enhancement, they say get the content down first. So, maybe not even the rest of the day today, but right now, I'm not worried at all about CSS. I'm just getting the content together. All right? I'm just getting the content together. And then later we'll go in and we will style it for both the desktop and the mobile version. So, first thing I want to do is I want to create a banner. So I'll go in the notepad and I will put a header And I'll put an H1, and I will say Lorraine County Community College. All 
Let me tell you, the temptation is going to be good to look at, uh, it's going to be big to look at this and say, you know what, oh, I hate how that looks. That's ugly. Let's, let's put some less space, let's make it bigger, smaller, whatever. Resist that temptation. We want to get the content down first. We want to develop a home page for both of them. All right? A home, a home page that is going to serve as a template for um, the rest of our pages. So I'm going to go and I'm going to save this. In my include file folder, and I'm going to call it banner.inc. Alright. I didn't want to say Lorain County Community College. So I'll go and save that. Now I'll go into both the mobile version and the desktop version and I'll point to that include file. So let me bring the that in and I'll point to it. Well remember to point to an include file you've got to go in PHP mode. You can't do that with plain old HTML. And all I have to do is say include, and I have to specify the path to the include file. Well, if I'm here, and the include file is here, how do I get from there to there? Alright. I'm in full, and I want to get to the include file folder. I'm here, and I want to go to here. Remember, these things are trees. Any of you there? The operating system class, the squirrels running on the branches of the tree, and so on. You can't go from here to here directly. That's, the squirrel can't jump that far. All right? the squirrel has to walk up the branch and go from full up to the root, and then can walk down to the ink branch. All right? So we have to go up to get to the root, and then down to the ink directory. And the way that you represent that will be include dot dot that takes me up to the root directory slash ink takes me down to the include files directory and then I can specify the name of the include file. And I'm going to put that in the full site and I'm going to put that in the mobile version as well. So let me save that. And we'll put that same include file there. Now, here's the interesting thing. So, at this point, maybe the way that I structure my directories might become clearer. Because, what's the path from the mobile directory to that include file? It's the same thing. I go up to the root, then down to the include file. So, really nice to do that because it's going to be very consistent that way. Alright? So, let's go in and save this. And let's go and refresh that. There's a banner on the full version. Refresh this one. There's a banner on the mobile version. Now it's way too big on the mobile version, right? And, you know, it doesn't look very interesting. We could probably do some things with the colors or whatever. That's fine. We can, we can address that at some point. Remember, our task, first of all, is to get the content straight and create a template 
and create a home page slash template that will serve both as our um, It'll serve both as our homepage and as a template. All right. So we got the banner out of the way. All right. We got the banner on both our full version and the desktop version out of the way. Now we want the nav to be. Um, Similar, but not identical in both. Now, we could do this a couple different ways. I'm going to take the easy way out, all right, in this case. I'm going to create two include files, uh, a, a main nav and a, a secondary nav, all right? And then I will just include in the mobile version just the main nav. And in the full version, I'll include the main nav and the secondary nav. Now. Um, we might go back and revise this, all right, to be a little bit different. But for now, this is what this is how we're going to do it. All right. So let's go in and let's create our main nav. So main nav INC. We go in here and edit it. All right. We're going to have a nav section and nav. Navigation is typically a list of um Unordered list of links, so I'll create my UL and UL. LI contains a link, a href equals. Well, what pages did we say we we're going to have? We said we're going to have, um, we said we're going to have a home page and for each of the four classes. That's going to be on everyone. On the Full version, there's going to be a few more links. That's what's going to be in the secondary nav. All right. Now, so we're going to have CISS 265, 266. What's the link from this page to the CISS 265? I would do href equals CISS265.php. What will be the syntax of the link? On the mobile page, be the same thing. All right. By me pointing the user, redirecting the user to one of these two folders, then all I have to do is specify the file name as the link, and everything should be okay. So I can go and I can say, "Hey, this is a link to CISS 265." I forgot to make a link to the home page. What's the link of what what's the, the URL of the home page in both situations? It's index.php. Because I'm staying all within one folder, I don't have to worry about the path to it. So CISS2. 66, 268. Does anyone know the number for the iPod class, iPad class? We'll just call it Apple then. All right. So I can go and I can save this as my main nav. And I can go in like I did before, and, and put that include file in both of uh, my home pages.
Now, if we remember, based on the description of the problem, there's also a secondary nav for the stuff uh, for the full website. So let's go in here and let's make one of those guys. And it's going to look like the like the main nav, except it's going to have different links in it. So I'll call it secondary nav. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put, you know, a bunch of extra links. Now if you remember, based on the, the discussion of the specifications, this extra nav isn't on the mobile site. All right? So I don't put that include file in the mobile site. I do, however, I will, however, put it on the index for the full site. Now, why did I just, why did I make an include file? Why didn't I just go and put this navigation um, in the, in the, the home page for the, uh, for the full site? Why did I put it in an include file? Well, not, not in case I want to add it to the mobile site, although that's true. That's true as well. But I might want to put this on every single page on the full site. So there's going to be, let's say, eight pages on the full site. All of them I want to have a consistent navigation. So on all of them, because this is going to serve as a template too, on all of them, we're going to have the main nav and the secondary nav include file. So let's go and bring up this, and I'll put in the secondary nav. All right, so now, I meant to copy that extra a few times. Now, if we look, here is the index, all right, and the mobile version is going to look the same as it did before. It's going to have the main nav, but it's not going to have the secondary nav, all right. In that way, essentially what I'm doing with this, to kind of maybe back up and take the broader view for a second, is I'm making little building blocks. I'm making little components that I know are going to be used on more than one page. Now, some of those components are going to be on both the mobile site and the full site. Some of those components are not going to be on the mobile site, but they're going to be on every page on the full site. So, therefore, it benefits me to make a little component, to make it a little include file. So that I can go and I can piece together my web pages. Instead of writing out all of this code in each individual web page, I simply put together the stuff that I need from those building blocks to create the web page. And then I go in and I add extra stuff if I need to add extra stuff. All right, if I need to add extra stuff in addition to these building blocks. Okay? Now, we have a bit more to go. All right? But I think now is a good breaking point. What we're going to do next time is we're going to add the content areas and the um, what do I want to do? The content areas, the footer, the aside, and then we're going to style all this so that it looks, it looks reasonably good. But again, the idea of this is we're approaching this. We know that our challenge is to have two separate sites, but we don't want to have to work twice as hard as if there's one site. So we do a little bit of pre-planning and define it this way 
and define these little building blocks, and then we piece together our pages from these building blocks, and that gives us just a lot more flexibility uh, going forward. All right, that's it for today. <laughs>